In this video, I'll show you how to add a person into a photograph using Luminar Neo. We're going to combine two photos into one, solving the problem, which is often the case for us photographers. We take the image of our family, our loved ones, we want to be in it too. So in this one, I'm going to add myself back into a photo I took of my wife and two children on a recent trip to our local beach. And I'm going to combine that with a photograph that my daughter took of me in the same location so that we end up with a photograph that appears to have the whole family together. We'll cover layers, how they interact together, and also how we can leverage Luminar Neo's really advanced masking features to quickly make the selections that we want and stick around till the end because there's a really vital step that we need to do to actually be able to edit our photo as a whole. Right, let's get into step one, which is editing our base layer. So we're gonna jump into the edit section here and as our initial step, we don't want to do anything too crazy. We just want to get this photo looking good. So first of all, I'd recommend applying a camera matching profile. So I like the camera flat profile. We're just going to have a little play with the exposure. I'm actually going to boost the smart contrast up, but as you can see, we lose all the detail in the background, but because this is a raw photo, we should be able to recover that nicely by dropping the highlights, a little boost in the shadows. And I always like to make sure that we have a true white point and a true black point. But as I've explained in previous videos, I don't really like to do it with a white and black slider, as you may assume you would want to do. I prefer to do it with curves, but before we can do that, I like to just turn on my show histogram and just click these little icons here, which is going to allow us to see where we're bleaching out. That gives us the red. And so if we pull this over, we know that we're bleaching out to pure white where those pixels turn red. And the same if I bring the black point over, we can see where we're hitting pure black. So currently we don't have a pure black, so I'm just going to move that over until I start to see some of those blue pixels appearing. By doing that, we can also see that the exposure on the people in the scene has got a little dark. So I'm just going to bump up the shadow and then bring that down slightly as well. I'm pretty happy with the color temperature, but I'm just going to boost it up ever so slightly just to warm things up a little bit and just make sure that the tint is looking good. Obviously, if we go to the left, we're going green, magenta to the right. We just want to sit that at a neutral position. Now, in terms of color, it's a little desaturated. So you might think, oh, grab the saturation slider, bump that up. But the problem with doing that is we're saturating every color. Now, what's the difference if I actually bump up the vibrant slider? I'm going to grab that and move that up. We're introducing color, but the skin tones aren't getting oversaturated. Again, this is the vibrance fully at 100. Now, if I grab saturation and push it to 100, we're getting a very orangey skin tone. It's a little bit too much. So what I prefer to do is usually bump up the vibrant slider if I want to introduce just a little bit more color. Now to turn these little pixel warnings that we had here where we just click these icons here. Yes, you can click those icons. Alternatively, you can just press J on your keyboard and that will turn those on and off. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the photo at the moment, but what we want to do is zoom in and just check we're happy with the finer details. So sharpening is something we do definitely want to bump up. We don't want to go too crazy with this. We just want to make sure when we zoom in that that sharpness is at a pretty sweet point. Something like that's pretty good. And I'm just going to reduce the radius and then bump it up and mm, probably somewhere around 35. I'm happy with that. This was shot at ISO 64, so there's very little noise in this, but if you want to, you can bump up a little bit of noise reduction. Now you may have noticed when I zoomed in that there was just a little bit of fringing going on on our photo. So a good idea is just to jump into the optic section and just turn on the auto fix chromatic aberrations. That's gonna help with that. Auto defringe is also gonna help. And usually I like to turn on auto distortion corrections, which is just going to correct for any lens distortions that you may have. And now if I come up and toggle the before and the after, before and after, I'm pretty happy with that as a nice clean global edit for our base layer of the photo. So now we need to get that same edit applied to the element we're going to be bringing in. So the photo of me, we need to copy and paste those settings. We could go in and manually try and remember those sliders and adjust them, but you're never going to get that curve exactly the same. So the best method, right click on the thumbnail, come to adjustments. We're going to copy these adjustments. Now select the photo of me and we're just going to come to adjustments and paste those adjustments. And now we have two photos that should match very closely in terms of their initial editing. But the problem we have is we can't actually combine two layers of photos that have their own adjustments applied to them individually. So what we're going to have to do is actually hard bake these adjustments into this photo before we can load it as a layer. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to export 
call the file something appropriate, make sure it's in a TIFF format with Adobe RGB as the color space with a nice high bit depth of 16 rather than eight and we're good to go. So we'll export that and I'm gonna send that straight to a continue editing folder that I've set up. So now if I jump to that folder, we can see that we have that and currently there are no edits applied even though it has been edited because it's a flat image. So I'm gonna jump back into the original that I want to add me into. I'm gonna to come to the edit section and now within the edit section on the left hand side, we have access to the layers section here. Click the plus icon and we just need to navigate to that photo. So I've set up a folder called continue editing. I'll jump into that. Anthony pre-edit on beach. I double click it. Now we don't see anything yet because we haven't actually selected the layer. All we've done is load it into the layers palette. So all I need to do is click on the thumbnail itself. And now we can see with 50% opacity, there I am. And when I actually stood in for this photo, I was just to the side of the remains of this tree trunk here. And I thought that would make a nice photo adding me to the side of the frame here and have my family there. However, it's a bit hollow in the middle of the frame. It's very empty there. So what I think would actually be better is to move me over boop, 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 and put me more here behind my family. And now we've got a nice triangular shape going up towards the top of my head here and back down that way. And visually that's more pleasing than having me off to the side like this. And so we're gonna move me over here and we're gonna come over and crank the opacity all the way to 100 so we can check, yep, we've got me in the frame there. Bring that away, that's my family behind. So what we need to do is remove the background. And there's a really nice easy way to do that in Luminar Neo. Just in the masking section underneath layer properties, we just need to come to background removal AI. I'm just gonna click that and Luminar Neo is gonna do a bit of calculation. And just like that, it's worked out foreground and background and I just need to click remove. Now here I am along with the um, bit of wood here as well. So I'm free floating on my layer and I'm above my family. So I'm in the front layer at the moment. So obviously we wanna pop me behind, but we don't want to disturb the background itself. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna position myself where I want to be, something like that's good. And the first thing I want to do is actually remove the log that I'm leaning on here. So we need a mask that has the ability to delete and that is the brush. So we have paint and we have arrays, paint and arrays. So I'm gonna select the arrays option. Rather than have a soft brush that I often like working with, I'm just gonna drop that all the way to zero so we have a nice hard brush. If I click and paint, you can see that I'm actually gonna be able to erase that bit of wood like that, nice and easy. But we wanna get that done nice and quick. So I'm gonna boost the size up really big and very quickly, we can just very cleanly erase anything we don't want to appear in the photo. But what do we do now? Well, there could be a potential mistake that you need to avoid, and that would be to think, well, I need to erase my arms so that we can reveal the arm of my daughter, my son, and my dog behind. That would be a lot of extra work that we don't really need to do. So let me show you the solution of how I would solve this. I'm actually gonna to come to our base layer over here and select that. I want to duplicate that layer. So I'm gonna right click or option click on a Mac, click duplicate, and now I have two of these layers. I'm gonna move one above me, and now using that same technique of masking, coming over to layer properties, masking, I'm actually going to be able to remove the background. So Luminar Neo is gonna do its calculation, and hopefully we're gonna be left, well, there you go, with my son, the dog, my daughter, all of that selected. We've got a little bit of the bird there, but that's fine, we can get rid of that very easily. I'll click remove and bang, there I am behind my daughter and my son. Now this mask isn't perfect, but it's got us pretty close pretty quickly. If I zoom in here, we can see that there's a lot of softness on my son's leg where it's gone translucent. So we could come in and use the refinement brush tool and actually try and get more specific with that. That is one way we can do it. So I could select the object brush and try and force Luminar Neo into knowing that this is an object that I want kept. And by doing that, you're just forcing the AI to have a little bit more knowledge about what you want kept in your scene and what you want to get rid of. So for example, there was an area just between my daughter's arm and her body here where we actually want to see my arm going behind. So what I'm gonna do is just paint this back in orange now I'm gonna choose a transition zone to say, hey, this is the area where we're going to transition back into the background. 
and already it's cut that out, but I'm just gonna make sure it knows its background just by painting in a little bit of blue, just to force it to know that. And I'll hop back out of that, and now you can see my arm does go behind my daughter there. If you're still not happy with your edges, which I'm not really here, we can come into the brush tool itself, and by selecting Arrays and making this just a little bit softer, we can come in and we can just erase those edges. That is a terrible bit of uh, penmanship that I'm doing here. And normally I would be using a graphics tablet just to clean this up rather than a mouse. But I always like to use a mouse when I'm doing these tutorials just to show you guys that it's perfectly possible to do these kind of edits with a mouse. And just for example sake, if you want to do straight lines, all you need to do is click once, hold the Shift key on your keyboard, and then click at the end of that line and it's going to create a nice straight line for you so you can very quickly clean up edges that are pretty straight as well. Now I'm not sure whether you guys noticed this or not but I did forget to scale myself. When my daughter took the photograph of me she was actually a little bit closer than when I took the photo so I'm actually just a little larger than I should be so I'm just going to scale myself back down so I don't look freakishly large. Something like that is much more believable. Okay, now here's a really important point when it comes to compositing, bringing in new elements into a scene. What you always wanna ask yourself is, how would this new element actually interact with the environment in terms of lighting, in terms of shadow, contrast, all of that kind of stuff. So for a believable composition, the object that you've introduced should interact within that scene the same as other objects elements that are already within that environment. So in our case here, the sun is top down, there's shadows on the floor. Thankfully, we're not gonna see my shadow in this case, but perhaps in your photo, there may be a shadow. And if there should be a shadow, you're gonna to have to come up with a solution for actually introducing that shadow for believability. One thing that would be going on in our photo is I would actually have slightly darker shorts than what we have here. The photo that was taken, the sand would have been reflecting the light straight onto my whole body and so I'd have a bright illumination on my legs which actually wouldn't be present here because I'm tucked in behind the log so there'd actually be a lot less light reaching my midriff, reaching my legs and so we need to address that. So let me show you a solution. There's many ways you can tackle this but I'll show you a solution of how we can do that. Okay, so whichever layer is selected on this left-hand side, that is the layer that's gonna be affected by any tools we create. So if I start messing around with Develop Raw, for example, and I boost this up, it's going to affect just the mask of um, my family, which is our top layer. So I'm just gonna press Control Z to undo that. And what we want to do is actually start editing me. So I'm gonna jump in here and I wanna darken myself down. I could do that with the develop tool and start dropping the exposure and mask that in. That would be one way to tackle that. But I'm gonna use a different tool. I'm gonna to come down here to Relight AI. And the great thing about dropping the brightness near slider is we also have access to the warmth, which is gonna allow us to introduce a blue or a yellow tone. And by introducing a little bit of blue, it's actually gonna make it more believable down in this bottom half because again, there's not as much bounce light off the golden sand. So it's not gonna be as influenced by the golden coloring, it's gonna be more blue. So I'm gonna grab a mask now and I'm just gonna mask it in from the bottom up. So I'm working with a linear gradient. I'm gonna click at the bottom, like where you see my knee, and I'm just gonna mask up and that's just gonna introduce that darkening effect just from 100% here, 50% in the middle, zero at the top. So once I close that down, we're gonna see that is just darkened that down ever so slightly. Now look, this is ever so subtle. If I hide it and show it, it's subtle, but it's little things like this that are just gonna help with the believability of your composition. Having a cleaner mask as well, absolutely that is gonna help. So I could clean up this little bit of haloing around the edge here, around my dog, you know, this kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi glow that's going on. Absolutely, I could clean that up, but look, I'm not gonna worry about that for this tutorial just for the sake of time. Now, as you just saw from the application of that tool, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We have the ability to speak directly into any specific layer with tools and affect that layer individually. That's great. But what happens when we wanna edit this photo as a whole? The ideal solution would be a merge layers option and we get a flattened image to then start working on. And I have actually spoken to the CEO of Skylum with the suggestion and he's assured me that he's gonna get the text actually working on that. So fingers crossed we'll get that before too long. 
But for now, the solution is the same as we did before, which is just exporting this as a TIFF. Now, not now, we can then apply all of those edits onto that layer as a whole. Let's do that. We go right click, export. All those settings are still there. We can just hit export. And now we're gonna have access to that within our catalog in continue editing. There we go. There's me and my family all together, yay. And the first thing I'd like to do, which has probably been annoying you guys, just like it's been annoying me, and that is straighten up that horizon. So I'll just go to the crop tool, click outside and do a slight rotation. We'll apply that. And now the seat is nice and straight. And so our OCD doesn't need to go mental about that anymore. And the next thing I'd also like to do is just clone out some of all these anomalies on the sand. And as you guys know, all we do is just click on a sample point and then we can use that sample to paint over things such as the stones or whatever it is in your scene that you want to get rid of. And when you want to make a new sample point, you just click the Alt key or option on a Mac, click where you want to borrow from and then start painting. It's that easy. Now, when you're cloning things out, I would recommend you want to sample from the side of the thing that you want to paint out. That way, the texture is going to be the same. For example, if I wanted to get rid of something in my foreground that's nicely in focus and I borrowed from the back here, it's just not going to look right. It's going to be too smooth to undo that. Just borrow from the side and that way the pixels you're borrowing will match the pixels that you're going to paint over in terms of perspective. You guys don't need to see me cloning all of that out, but I do have a video all about the specifics of cloning and how to do it, which I'll link to in the description below. If you guys don't have Luminar Neo yet, I have currently a 30% discount code. It's for limited time only. So if you're watching this in the first week and a half or so of launch, a 30% discount is available to you. So check out that link as well. Hope that's useful to you. But for now, let's speed things up and jump to the final touches. I don't want to do too much more to this photo, but we'll get this finished. So as a finishing touch, I think I'm just gonna leverage the Enhance AI, Accent AI. What a great slider this is, like 100% is always too much, but you can see what it actually does for your photos. Once you've done initial cleanup and you just apply a bit of Accent AI, it really goes a long way. I'm also gonna enhance the sky slightly as well. I just wanna pop out a little more blue there. And perhaps even just a little bit of structure as well. Structure's a great slider as well. Like I don't wanna to bring too much attention to the background. However, I do just wanna just add a little bit of structure. And because we're backlit, we're not quite as bright as I would like. So I'm just gonna jump down into the portrait section here and we should be able to leverage face AI and if I grab the face light slider, I'm just gonna bump this all the way to 100 and you can see each one of us is being brightened. Of course, that is too much, but we can actually just use that slider to quickly bring in a little bit more light into our faces, something like that. Let's look at before and after. Yep, I'm happy with that. And as a final thing, what I'd like to do is just make sure that my curve is looking good so I can actually craft a little more contrast by fine tuning this curve. Before and after, yeah, it's just crispened up those shadows and the blacks nicely. And that is how, with a little bit of knowledge of compositing and layers, how you can add people that weren't initially there in a photo into a group photo. At the beginning, we added a custom camera profile in our develop raw section. And if you're not able to do that, I've put together a video that you can check out there that will help you and walk you through how to do that. Also, if you wanna look at cloning, I'll put a link to that video up as well. And for those of you that have reached out wondering where I am and if I'm okay, I am. Thank you very much. I'm going to be back making some videos for you guys. So thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And I've missed you guys. See you in the next video.